conceptual people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everybody uh, is getting their week off to a great start. Uh, it has been definitely a busy weekend for me in a positive way. Uh, there's so much going on uh, in so many different areas of my life. And uh, while it can be hectic, I am thankful and grateful uh, for future uh for the anticipation of what is to transpire in the near and uh, distant future. Uh, with that being said, I want to sit down and I want to talk with you briefly while my mind is on this. I was sitting up and I was dealing with my youngest grandson this weekend. He's uh, two months and about, I mean, two years and about three months. So somewhere around 27 months or whatever, however y'all count. Uh, kitty, kitty time. Uh, but he's a little over two years, very perceptive, uh, extremely intelligent, knows how to communicate, uh, and loves kicking it with his uh, pawpaw. Uh, but I was watching him and I was sitting up and I was looking and something that I noticed about him and I started to compare with other kids. And I said, man, kids are a lot like we are uh, when I think about the black community what am I saying I'm saying that uh, there are some kids you can give a pacifier and they will be pacified uh, a pacifier is something that you give a kid you put it in the mouth it simulates the nipple so it simulates the feeding and for kids they'll suck on that pacifier for time on end, they'll become addicted to the pacifier more than the actual nourishment of to the true nipple, whether it's being from a breast or from a bottle. And it will literally become a part of their comfort zone. Well, when it comes to blacks, our pacifiers are black faces in high places. Uh, our pacifiers are the, the, the semblance of black progress through the observation of specific blacks that have been propped up for the sole purpose of arguing the point uh, that racism does no longer does not exist any longer and we have been fed so many different faces and they are constantly being put in front of us and and we take them as pacifiers but what I noticed about my grandson and a number of other children is they never took the pacifier they, they, they initially allowed you to put it in their mouths, but after sucking on it for a while and realizing that it wasn't producing anything, they spit it out. And no matter how many times you try to put it back in, they spit it out. And the more disquieted they come about their hunger and about whatever it is they want, the more you try to put it, the more vigorously and aggressively they spit it out. And they eventually are fed because they refuse to be pacified. And I'm starting to think, I said, here's our problem. We are too easily pacified by things that have no intrinsic value like black faces in high places just like the pacifier it feels good it feels like something of uh, of intrinsic value but it has no productivity it produces absolutely nothing in the lives of the people who are being plugged by it so you've got this thing but it's not producing what it's supposed to be producing. It has a feeling of something good, but it has no true productivity. It's time for us to spit out pacifiers. It's time for us to spit out the pass. It's time for us to stop trusting in and drawing near to black faces in high places that do not produce anything of intrinsic value. The Congressional Black Caucus has had more than 30 years to produce, produce nothing. So many black elected officials in high places produce nothing. We've even had a black president produce nothing. And here we are 
again, sitting up and being pacified by black people saying what they need us to hear to get us to do what they want us to do when in turn we will receive nothing but a pacifier, some black face or some representative talking good in our ear but giving us nothing of intrinsic value from which we can stand on and build ourselves up. The truth of the matter is our victory, our empowerment will not come from who we elect in office. Our extraction from the pits of oppression and poverty will not come from who we elect and put in office. Our uh, empowerment rests on the shoulders of our own behavior, our own thinking, our own desires to come together and become unified and build as one, to sit up and understand the importance of black group economics, to understand the importance of holistically educating our youth, to understand the importance of rebuilding and restoring the black family nucleus. Why? People ask me, why are you so enamored by the idea of rebuilding the black family because the black family is the institution through which black principles and values and interests are inculcated into the minds of youth at an early enough age that it becomes impressed upon their minds in a way that it's not shaken when it's exposed to a Eurocentric idea of what is. And so when you have a black family, masculine energy from the father, feminine energy from the mother, merging together to create synergy that expresses through action, expresses through teaching, expresses through practice the values that are so important business ownership reading financial uh excellence and and, and understanding and knowledge of how to manage money and start businesses and operate with the responsibility mindset that no one else is responsible for your well-being so that we build on our own. We act on our own. It is only then that we will realize that we have established for ourselves a footing in the political arena so now we can play the political game you can't play the political grand game from a place of desperation when you have no way of leveraging anything the thing that you talk about the most being of value is your vote and you give it away for free you demand nothing in return. And so therefore you have no power whatsoever, but you have to have economic power because it's through the economic power that you established an understanding and you send a message that I don't need you, but I have a place in this, in this fight and I have a seat that I've created for myself and I have influence now. We've got to do better. We've got to stop being pacified. We've got to spit out the pacifier and demand that we receive that which is of nutritional value to us, intrinsic value to us. It is now that we must understand that it doesn't matter who's in the Oval Office if we have no economic power. It doesn't matter who's in the Oval Office. If we have not properly prepared our progeny, it doesn't matter who's in the Oval Office. If we're sitting around waiting on someone else to feed us, it's time for us to take control of our personal and collective sovereignty and rise to the pinnacle of who we were designed to be. It is absolutely imperative that we stand up now and realize that it's in our hands, that no one else is coming to our rescue, that we don't have any friends that are going to act loyally toward, lo with, with a sense of loyalty towards us. We've got to stop being pacified by image and optics. We've got to have something that we can measure, that we can consume. This is what I bring to you. Give it some consideration. Give it some time. Give it some thought. But start to behave 
as if you have power. Start to make decisions and moves that give you the ability to navigate and move around in this world. Stop waiting on someone to open doors for you. Kick them in. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. I just had to drop that on you. I hope that uh, it, 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 it resonates with you. I hope that it gives you a sense of inspiration and insight. I hope that it inspires you to make a move. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. Talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements.